Hey guys, welcome to Automatic Source. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to convert R code into an API. Let's suppose we have some R code that's maybe doing calculations or generating plots, or it could also be doing some statistical models. And then we want to take that R code and wrap it inside of an API. So we'll have an API running on a server. That server could just be our, our local machine, but it could also be running on AWS or DigitalOcean or some other hosting service. And then we'll use another tool like curl or Python to be able to submit a request to our API server. And then when it submits a request to the API server, then the API will then execute the R code in the background and return the result of the R code back to curl, Python, Java, or whatever other tool that we're using. And we'll be able to do that by using a really cool package in R called the Plumber package. And I'll dive more into Plumber once we get into the coding portion of the video. In this video, we're gonna be walking through three coding examples. The first example will be relatively simple. We're just gonna write an R function that adds two numbers together, and then we're gonna convert that into an API so that you can see how the Plumber package works in action. Then we'll walk through a second example where we'll show how we can take an R function that generates a plot and convert that into an API. And then in our third and final example, we'll show a really common use case, which is where we wanna take an R model object and convert that into an API so that we can make an API call, get a prediction from an R model object, and then return that prediction back into our other environment such as Python. All right, let's dive into the coding portion. To get started, I'm gonna open up RStudio and we need to install the plumber package. So I'll just type in install.packages and then plumber. And I won't run this since I already have it installed, but you'll need to do that to get started. And then once we have the package set up, we can go ahead and start writing our code. So our first example, as I mentioned, will be just a simple one to, to get us started and test out the package. And we're going to write a function here that adds two numbers together. So this function that we write will be written just like we would be writing any other function in R. So we write the keyword function and we have these parameters X and Y, and then we're just returning the sum of those two numbers. The difference is that on the line above this function, we have this line that starts with pound sign and asterisk. So when we write pound sign asterisk, it's telling R that we're going to use the plumber package to treat this function as an API. So when we write pound sign asterisk, and then we have uh, at symbol followed by post, this now tells us that, or tells R that we want to treat the function specifically as a post request. So our API will, in this case, will work as a, a post request. And then the last part of this line is the write slash sum, which defines the endpoint of the API. So for example, when we make the API request later, we're going to make it to, uh, in this case, since we're running our local machine, it'll be to localhost, and then it'll be running at some specific port. So let's say we're running at port 8000, and then write slash sum. This will be the URL that we make the post request to in, in this specific case. All right, so now let's go ahead and load the plumber package. So I'll just type in library plumber. And now that we have the plumber package loaded, we can go ahead and convert our function into an API. So we're gonna write this line that says r equals plum of example dot r. What this does is it's just taking our r script as input. So our r script is called example dot r. And then we're gonna write this other line of code where we launch the uh, API. So we launch the API to run on our server. And then when you do that, R will launch this UI, which is Swagger UI. I won't go too much into detail on the Swagger UI. If you are familiar with working with APIs, you've probably seen or, or worked with Swagger. So I'm gonna work, I'm gonna look more at how we call the API from tools like curl and Python in this video. All right, I'm gonna open up the command line and use curl to submit a request to our API. So I'll type in curl data 
and then we need to put in the parameter names and their values. So our parameters are x and y. So let's say x equals 5 and y equals 3. And then we type in the name of our endpoint or URL that we're making the request to. So type in localhost. And this is running at port 8000. And write slash sum. And that returns us the number eight, which is five plus three. So that's a good sign our request is working. Let's dive into our second coding example. In this example, we're gonna use R to generate a bar plot and then render that as a PNG file that we'll be able to obtain by submitting a Git request. In this case, we have our function that it doesn't take any parameters. We're gonna use the base bar plot function for the numbers one through 10. And then to convert this into an API, the line above the function will start with the pound sign asterisk like we used before. But this time we're gonna make this into a git request. So we'll use at symbol git. And then our endpoint will be right slash plot. For this example, we need to add one additional line above this, which will be pound sign asterisk followed by at symbol PNG. And what this does is it tells R that we want to generate the bar plot and render it as a PNG file. Now let's go ahead and launch our updated API. So we're going to use the plum function on example.r and then we're going to run it at port 8000 and this will launch the swagger UI but this time we're going to dive into Python and show how we can submit a git request from Python to our R API. In Python, we're going to start by importing the request library, which we'll use to submit the API request. And then in the next line of code, we'll use request.get to submit a git request to our local host at right slash plot. If I go ahead and run these two lines of code, I can get back the API response object. So if I just type in RESP, that tells us the day status code of 200, which means that our request was successful. If we type in response.content, this will show us the binary encoded form of the PNG file that we created with the R code. So this looks a little bit like gibberish, but if we write out this encoded form to a physical file, we'll be able to look at the actual image file. And we can do that in the next three lines of code. So here I'm just going to create a PNG file called sampleplot.png and then write out this binary encoded data. And now I'll open up the image file so we can take a look at, at what it looks like. And here's the image file. So we can see that we were able to use Python to make a Git request to our R API. And then R code was ran to generate this plot and the plot was now returned back to us. In our third and final example, we're gonna show how we can write some Python code to submit a request to an R API where the R API will get predictions from an R model object and return those back into Python. In our use case, we're going to use the R part library to train a decision tree on some randomly generated data, but the actual model that we're using doesn't really matter. You could use decision tree, logistic regression, linear model, random forest, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is just for the purpose of showing how we can call a model object and get those results back into Python. So here I have this uh, simple script. So I'm going to load the R part library and then I'm just generating some random data. And here I'm going to use the R part function to train a decision tree on that randomly generated data. And I'm saving this model object out to a file. So again, this part isn't, as, isn't super important. It's more about whatever other model you want to use you'll be able to do that by just having the model object saved somewhere. And then we'll go into our example.r script. So in addition to the other functions we have, let's add a, a new function here and we'll call it, um, we'll make it at the endpoint right slash model. And within the function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load the model object and then we're going to take the inputs that we need. So in this case, the model requires three inputs, var1, var2, and var3. And we're going to just take those inputs, make sure they're all numeric in this case, but that they may differ depending upon your use case. And this creates a data frame called test. 
And then we'll use the predict function to take our model object and get the predictions on these, this test data frame. And then lastly, we'll return the first element of the prediction result because the prediction result returns the probability that these inputs are uh, mapped to A or B, which are the, the two labels. So in this case, I'm just going to say var 1 is 5, var 2 is 40, and var 3 is 200. And these are just made up examples. So if I run this code just to show you what it looks like, this returns the predictions of our model object. So in this case, it shows the predicted probability that these inputs map to A or B. But in this case, we just want to get back the predicted probability that the label is A. So we'll just return the first element of this object. Now let's go ahead and launch this API and then use Python to make a request to get predictions from our R model object. So I'll just use the plum function again with example.r and then we'll set it to run again at port 8000. Okay, so now we're gonna open back up Python and we're gonna submit a request to the API that we just launched. So here again, we're gonna use the same request library and we're gonna make a git request to our local host running at right slash model. And this time we need to pass three inputs to our API because in this specific case, our model object requires three inputs, but that will depend upon what model you're using. For this example, I'll use the same sample inputs, so 5, 40, and 200, and then I'll go ahead and run this git request. When I get the result, I can see that there's a status code of 200, which is good. It means our request was successful. And then I can come out, respond to content, and this shows us the predicted probability, so the predicted probability that our inputs map to the label A in our case. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and please make sure to stay tuned for future videos by subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell so you get notified about when I post future videos. And make sure to like this video as well. That helps me out a lot. Thank you so much.